ever wondered how to make an AC simulation using the LT Spice program? No? Well, I'm gonna show you anyway. So, first thing, we need to tell the simulator that we want an AC type of simulation. So, we will go to the simulation command and go to AC analysis. Now, what's an AC simulation or AC analysis? Well, it will compute the small signal AC behavior of the circuit linearized about its DC operating point. Yeah. So that means that it will take your circuit, find the stable operation point in which all DC voltages are constant. This will not check the startup or turn off behavior of your circuit. So it will not check transient behavior. You have a transient simulation for that. So yeah, it will take your circuit in a stable situation and then insert an AC signal into it. And you will be able to measure your inserted signal in various points of your circuit. So what types of sweeps can we do for our AC signal? Well, we have octave and decade, and then we have this list. Here we can just put some discrete frequencies, but we will go with decade. How many frequency points per decade? We can put 100. My computer is not a potato, so it will be able to handle this. And as frequency range, let's go from 10 Hertz to one megahertz. Okay, we have our simulation command. Now we need to insert our AC signal into the circuit. So for this, we need a voltage source. Just place it here. And the way to tell my circuit that I want this to be an AC input signal, I need to go to the advanced menu. In the small signal AC analysis bracket, I will just put in an AC amplitude of 1. The phase I will not fill out. This is useful in case we are using multiple input signals at different phases. By default it will be 0. And what circuit should we analyze using this AC signal? Well, first things first, let's make a simple low pass filter. Using a resistor, a capacitor, and just connect everything together. See how our circuit will behave. I will put some random values, one kilo ohm, and let's say 100 nanofarads. Okay, now if we run our simulation, we have the simulation window opening up here with the results spanning from 10 Hertz to one megahertz as requested in our simulation command editor. Now, if we look at the signal coming out of our voltage source, we will see it's perfectly flat. So no variation in magnitude, it's at 0 dB, and no variation in phase. It's a perfectly flat signal. Okay, now let's see our output. Let's just remove the first signal. This time we do see a variation. We see that our output signal is rather constant for a while and then it starts to drop off. This is exactly what we expect from a low pass filter. Above a certain frequency, it's starting to attenuate our signal starting to not let it pass. But how well is it attenuating? Well, we can see here on the left side, we have the output value expressed in decibels. What does this mean? Well, you can Google it. When talking about input and output volts, the gain in decibels is 20 times the logarithm of the output voltage divided by the input voltage. What this means is that, for example, when we have a minus 20 decibel point, that means that the output signal is 10 times smaller than the input signal. And we get this roughly at about 16 kilohertz. So just to make sure that our simulator is simulating correctly, let's see how the gain information from this window actually translates into a transient simulation. For this, we can just make another simulation, copy our previously done simulation into this new window, and we just need to change the input signal from an AC signal type of voltage source to a sine wave. We will put an amplitude of one and the frequency 16 kilohertz. Also, we need to tell our program that we want a transient type of simulation for about 10 milliseconds. Let's simulate. LT Spice is a nice way of putting everything in the same window. So we, on the right side, we still have our AC simulation and on the left side, we have our transient simulation. Here, if we look at our input signal, it's two volts. So one volt peak, two volts peak to peak. And we have our output signal. Let's see how big the output signal actually is. I can use my mouse to just click on my signal drag it and now if i look in the left bottom corner i see that the input voltage is two volts delta y is two volts i will right click it to unselect and now if i look at my blue signal it is 200 millivolts exactly so 10 times smaller than my input signal so the two simulations are giving me the same results okay so let's try to simulate something a bit more complicated 
I will just open a previously created schematic. What you have here is the basic back sandal tone control circuit. Quite a famous circuit, it has been around for many years. It features two potentiometers and a few other resistors and capacitors. Now we have a little problem here. LT Spice doesn't really have a component called a potentiometer, so we need to create one. We have these two resistors, R2 and R3, and then R6 and R7. Both of these need to form a potentiometer. And the potentiometer needs to have exactly 100 kilo ohms. So we can create a LT Spice command in which we create a parameter called potentiometer1 that has a value of 100k. This will tell us that our first potentiometer has 100 kilo ohms and the same thing we will do for our second potentiometer. Now, how do we get from this 100 kilo ohms to our resistor values? Well, we need another parameter, one through which we tell the program where our potentiometer is. We can call this parameter potentiometer1 deviation. For a start, let's call it 50. So it's at 50%. And now we can start calculating the values for our resistors. We can simply add a formula in the resistance input field, add some brackets, and in between these we can write a formula. Well, we can say it's potentiometer1 times the potentiometer1 deviation divided by 100. Now resistor 3, we need to have the rest of the resistance. So we can just call it potentiometer 1 minus the previously added formula. And in a similar fashion, we need to add formulas for resistor 6 and resistor 7. And we also need to tell the program about potentiometer 2 deviation. Let's make a simulation command. We will want a decade type of simulation, 100 points per decade, starting from 10 Hz, going up to about 30 kHz. So the entire audio range. Yes, and we have an error at R7. We forgot a T from potentiometer. Okay. And now if we look at the output, we will see it's not really flat. It looks quite all over the place. So how should we analyze the circuit to make sure that it actually works well? Well, the easiest thing would be to see how the circuit behaves under all possible values of our potentiometers. So instead of giving them static values, 50% meaning they're in the middle, we can give them an interval of values. So let's just edit our statement. We can simply turn it off and then create some new directives. We can create step type directives in which we give our variables multiple values. So we will give a step to the potentiometer 2 deviation parameter going from 1 to 99 in steps of 10. And the same thing we can do for our second parameter. Now what LT Spice is going to do, it's going to simulate all possible values and all possible combinations. So we get a lot of runs, it's taking a while. Potato power is not working very well today. And a few hours later, it's done. Now we see a lot of pretty colors, a lot of pretty things on our display. Let's make it a bit simpler. For example, we can just remove our phase. We don't need to see this. So we see all possible combinations of gain that our circuit is producing. We see that the flat line is roughly around minus 20 decibels, and around this point, it's going plus and minus. 16 decibels. Now if we want to see exactly what combination of resistors we need for each of these lines, we can go between the lines using the up and down arrow keys. So by simply pressing up, I'm going between various traces until I find the one that I actually want. Let's say I want to see exactly when we have a flat line response, since 50-50 was not the right position. So on the left side, on the lower frequency end, I am on the flat line. Now let's see on the right side. Not really on the flat line, still need to cycle a bit through my measurements. And now I found the case in which my filter is roughly not affecting my signal. To see exactly which out of all the simulation this one is, I can simply right click on it and it will tell me that potentiometer 2 is at 91 and potentiometer 1 is also at 91. 109 run out of 121. So using the AC type of simulation with LT Spice, you can have a very powerful tool at analyzing your audio filters or any other filters. Hope you got some useful information out of this and if you want to see more videos like this, like and please subscribe to my channel. See you next time, bye bye!